Okay, hello everyone. You're here, we're here. Welcome one and all back to Power Rangers Centurion for episode two. Uh, this live stream is brought to you by Rem Alternus Productions and is focused on the Power Rangers tabletop game as brought to us all lovingly by Renegade Game Studios, for which we are very grateful. Um, players, welcome to the table. We're going to go around uh, and let you go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, Eric, who plays Alex, is running a little bit behind, and the mystery of uh, Reese Vero is still to come. Uh, so we're missing a couple rangers currently, but everyone else is going to get a chance to introduce themselves. Um, let's start to my right as I see it, and we're going to go with uh, Link. Welcome, Link. Hi, I'm Grim. I play Link. Um, I'm actually excited to be here. Uh, on Friday, uh, you'll be able to catch me here again for All the Worlds. And on Tuesdays, I'm on Lucas G Variety for alternating Power Rangers and uh, Fallout. So you should join us. Nice. Uh, and While the Worlds is happening this week. It follows the same Wednesday-Friday structure as us here at Centurion. So if you're watching Centurion Rich, tune back in on Friday uh, for Well of the Worlds. Uh going to Bermuda got real wacky. Uh, isn't that right, Isabits? It did. We um, we are not in Kansas anymore, um, as we quickly found out. Um, but yes, I'm Isabits. Um, I'm here all of the time, everywhere. Um, I live at Rem now. Um, I will be here Friday for Well of the Worlds. I am here on Sunday for like Clockwork. And I'm forgetting things, but I don't remember. I'm on Lucas G Variety with Grimm on every other Tuesday. Um, yeah, I'm I'm just here all the time. You heard it. We're very grateful, though, for all of that. Um, and I'm looking forward to playing in Blades in the Dark in the Streamathon, which is kind of your thing. My thing is Power Rangers. Your thing is Power Rangers slash Blades in the Dark. Get it? Because the blade slashes. It's ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I got it. <laughs> uh, we'll move over to Brick Kerrigan. I mean Felix Boucheron, the saucy um, future Pink Ranger quite a ranger yet hi my name is john blair i'm happy to be here again yes i do play felix boucheron the currently sauciest of saucy people that are the sauciest in the world of sauce um i also play brick kerrigan on um, the power rangers podcast becoming mighty and morphin hopefully you're enjoying that um, this Saturday, we have our Q&A for season one, which I'm excited to be a part of and uh, hopefully answer some of your fun questions. So catch me there. And uh, I'm excited to see what we do today. Yeah, uh, that's uh, the Q&A slash cast parte is going to be at 630 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. Um, and we're going to be doing that here at twitch.com. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Master of Rep. That's what it is. Um, and you can feel free to use uh, either the Facebook post or the Instagram post about that to leave your questions or to spring them on the day. Um, I've also got some questions written down as Zordon for people to answer. And if people just want to spend an hour and a half yelling at me for making them cry, I'm okay with that. That's good content. Um, to be fair, I deserve it a little bit. Um, also, speaking of making uh, people cry, uh, you're no longer the Yellow Bear Ranger, but you are here in Centurion Ridge. Uh, hello, Katie. That was at all concerning to me as the Yellow Ranger who bought way too much yellow for this stream. I, I couldn't think of a really good intro uh, segue, so that's what you got, so. Okay, well, literally have no. Anyway, um, so hi, I'm Katie. Um, I am playing Leah McKenzie, the one of the only current rangers on the stream so far. Um, and if you didn't watch the one shot, you don't know what that means, so it's okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm also in the REM universe outside of this. I stream with um, Shadowrun on Tuesday night, Shadowrun Chicago. Um, so come join us on that. And I am all over the place artistically speaking so i'm excited to be here excited to have you all here as well um 
don't forget all players to take your story point just for being this episode. And for those of you uh, watching us live, thank you for joining us. Uh, don't forget that you can also become a member of the Ridge Ranger Ally Club. Try saying that 10 times fast. Um, you become a member of the Ridge Ranger Ally Club a couple of different ways. Uh, one way is to follow the Realm Alternus Twitch that you're watching now, and that will allow you to gift a story point to the Ranger of your choice or the GM, and these story points can change the tide of an episode, a combat, sometimes even the universe, as they've done before. Um, Isabits can attest to that as Jane Russell, because you have done that a time or two. Um... There are also points that you can give for an amount of bits. You can give uh, Ernie Coppers, Alpha Silvers, Red Bug Golds uh, to the players and each have a little bit of a different uh, ability boost bonus that they can add to the game for a particular ranger of your choice. Or you can subscribe to the Rem Alternus Twitch and give a ranger of your choice what's called a Morphin Master Point, which has a ton of different things for them to choose from that they can use to definitely change the tone of a game in their favor. Um, and again, all these can go to the players or GMs of your choice. If you want to give me stuff, I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, and the whole point about this is... You have Patreon is, gifts. You don't need gifts from anybody else. Thank you. I <laughs> like gifts. As an Aries, <laughs> it is my responsibility to enjoy <laughs> gifts. Um, but... The whole point of the gifts is that the story isn't just ours. Yes, we're telling it together, but as an audience member in great theatrical tradition, you are a part of the story too. Uh, so give early, give often, help the rangers save Centurion Ridge. Well, they're not technically rangers quite yet, um, but we'll get back to that after uh, the intro credits. So as they say in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, it's time to get more phenomenal. Welcome back, everyone. Um, when we last left off, of course, I had let people know that if you had not taken any food or drink from the Escape the Room office before our stream began, that you'd have a snag. Uh, going back through the story, everyone took either a food or a drink option, so no one's going to have a snag, um, which you may find very useful in the trials and tribulations ahead of you. Um, so the five of you had each gotten through your um, individual escape rooms, and you all kind of found yourself wandering the back utility quarters of the new Centurion Ridge Ultra Mall uh, during the pre-opening Escape the Room contest, uh, which I believe, Leia, you're not at all suspicious of this mysterious contest that uh, you were entered into. I, I am, I'm concerned about all things. All, all the time. Is anyone else uh, suspicious or wondering anything about this contest? Did anyone do any kind of like investigation to make sure this was legit and not like a scam or anything? Jules probably did some, tried to do some research online about it. All right. Uh, then I want you to give me a technology um, skill check for what you found about Alexis. Peter Havius, or escape the room things in general. Doing a check, just uh... any anyone that wants to can do the technology check, and technology checks in this case are about uh, computer mm -hmm. searches, Willow and Buffy season one kind of stuff. Gotcha. Um, Get a ten. Yeah, there there is a website. Uh, it's not the flashiest, but it looks serviceable. It worked on mobile. 
which not all websites do. So it was a website that worked on mobile, which was really great. Um, the website the website did not work for you when you tried it in mobile, uh, Leia. But but it did come up. It was just like a weird angled thing. So um, yeah. So after all this, after having the contest, kind of meeting each other for the first time, going to your individual rooms, all of you did get out of your rooms about the same time, even though each one of you went through your room individually at all kind of simultaneously. Unfortunately, the utility corridors behind the altar mall are a bit of a maze, and so you're not all going to meet each other right away. We're actually going to start with Felix, um, Jules, and Link, who have all been kind of walking around for a little bit of time, going down a hallway, trying to figure out where they are. Um, and you all kind of turn around different corners, and you bump into each other, essentially. Jules has her oh, book back it's out. Oh, you people again. Hi, uh, I was just wondering. Um, we, I, I got through the room, but now there's like a maze, and so I'm confused. Do you know where we're supposed to go after this? Is there like a after party or um, some other sort of festivity for us to do here? Uh, Jules was reading her book as she was walking around. Um, and when she when she hears you talking, she just kind of looks up. Uh, um, I, I I don't know. And Are you always to... buried in that thing like that? You don't ever look around when you're walking. That's so odd. Do you go around talking to people all of the time? That's odd. Well, is it? Normally, people interact with each other. I thought that's how. It, humans like acted but if we're just supposed to be sticking our noses in books all the time then i guess i've been humaning wrong anyway i'm gonna find a way out of here you're welcome to join me if you'd like do we have to talk the whole time no i'm sure i'll do enough talking for the both of us okay as as we continue down a hallway uh i have a question because Link has said nothing so far. He's been looking around. Okay. Uh, yes, how many I, paths? How many paths have uh, we come? F like, are we at like a T intersection or like a crossway or? It's like a weird K intersection. Uh, so not quite a T, but you've each come from one like leg, and there is one path left that none of you have trod. So you're welcome to go any way you want to, but there's only one unknown path. Link's just going to point down the unknown path. Great. I guess we're going this way. Uh, As I lead the charge, I suppose. As Jules uh, looks up and sees Link, she recognizes him, but she doesn't, she's too shy to say anything. So she just kind of like looks up and, uh, okay. And then goes back to her book and starts to follow down the hallway. Uh, has oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say Link's gonna take up the rear. Apparently, uh, is anyone trying GPS, trying to figure out where they are in the mall? Is anyone trying to call anywhere? Is anyone doing anything with their phones? I mean, Link probably would have checked his the moment he got out of the uh, the moment he got into the service corridor. Uh, you have no bars on your phone. I didn't think so. Okay. So you're going to keep going down the end of this hallway. At the end of the hallway, you come to a door that is that kind of foggy glass where you can't, like, see through it. But you can see a barrage of colors behind the door. Is it just like a dead end on the hallway? Hallway stops, and there's your door. Felix is going to knock on the door and ask if anyone... Oh, Felix is going to go... Um, uh, hello, is anybody is anybody in there? Um, I'm here for my prize. I finished the 
Um, I finished. I finished the escape room in record time, so I would like some uh, notification for that, please. You wait. You wait. There is no response. Have Have you tried the door? Well, I was trying to be polite, but I assume I can just open it if we can. I try the door. The door is not locked. Um, and the reason there was uh, no answer is because there is no one here, but you open the door to a corridor of buttons. Uh, it is a long corridor, wall-to-wall -wall buttons. If you saw the Stanley Parable, it's like the button ending in heaven where it's a whole bunch of buttons. Uh, they're not rotating, but it's literally just like big oval corridor of nothing but buttons. Uh, you can't see the other end. Um, and there is one big red button in the middle of the corridor on like a little pedestal thing. Can I, can I roll something to see if I can figure out like what's going to happen if we press the button or like since she's computer focused uh sure roll me science or technology your choice uh, i would like to see if i can observe there being a pattern to the buttons a uh, pattern for the button is going to be a survival roll it's like a weird cartography thing i'm doing i will make that a survival roll um my book is really good, and that's all I really care about. So I, I got it, too. Yes. Also, uh, I will give you this for that, too. Um, the buttons are really close together. Like, you would know for science to happen, the buttons would need to have, like, a little bit more room apart. Uh, they're, they're weirdly close together um, in a very not disconcerting way, but, yeah. Uh, so for... For your 12 link for pattern, there is no pattern. They're just linking randomly. It'd be much cooler if there was a pattern. Also, it's like 12 different colors. And so, like, if you're not big on a lot of colors, like, sensationally, it's just a lot. Well, I feel like we need to avoid the big red button. I feel like we're supposed to be drawn towards the big red button. It's the only thing in the room that makes any sense. It feels like a trap. What? what uh, why? Why would? Why would there be a, be a trap for us? I don't know. It feels like a trap. I, I, I think you watch too many movies. No. Well, I mean, maybe. But I don't think so. Is there Would anything any else? Like to... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you go. No, ahead. no, go ahead. <clears throat> okay. Um, would anybody like to press the button? Or is that something I'm just going to have to do for the good of the group? Before I answer that, is there anything else in the room that we would notice? Um... I will not make you do an alertness roll. Uh, first, I will let you know the button is too far away to press. You will have to enter the corridor of buttons in order to get to the big red button in the middle, okay. for one. For two, you can't tell what... All you can see is darkness beyond the buttons. You can't actually tell what is what is back there. Okay. Now, this is an oval-shaped corridor, and I'm having trouble picturing the ending from the Stanley Parable. Is there, like, a walkway, or, is it like, would we literally have to walk on the buttons? You literally gotta walk on the buttons. It's it's literally an oval corridor of buttons in a variety of colors. Okay, like, like so my... Disco floor. My, my brain is not misremembering, mis then. Okay, good. Yes. You, although you don't hear buttons press the buttons you don't hear you don't hear the siren call of pressing the buttons so so it's it's like a it's a room full of buttons like top to bottom like all, top all to over. bottom it is it is a circular barrel shaped room of nothing but buttons with one big red button in the middle can i press one of the buttons on the floor 
that I would potentially yeah. be walking on? Sure. Okay, I'm going to, like, kneel down and press one of the buttons. Great. All the buttons, save for the big red one in the middle, go out the second you press the button. Um, and a little line of red moves down the now, um, now blank buttons. And it moves toward your group. Oh crap, we probably need to press the big one now. <laughs> it was a trap. I knew it was a trap. Link's gonna start running. <laughs> uh, give me an acrobatics check, Link. Alright. This is gonna be fun! You got a 10. Um, so the, the, the line of like red is coming a little quickly. So you, you miss it, but the line of red has moved past enough where another line of red is coming down a little bit quicker. So give me another acrobatics roll. Are you, is he jumping over the red line? Is that what's happening? Yep, that's what the acrobatics roll is for. An 11. You're doing really well. Uh, unfortunately, now it's like a little bit of a peppermint swirl. So give me one more acrobatics check. Yay, you get to the big red button. Would you like to press the big red button? Yes. Multiple right. times, actually. Only need to press it once. Once is all it takes. Uh, all of the, the the buttons kind of spring back to life in color, um, and the back wall, uh, you can tell it's a wall because you're close enough to it now. Opens up to reveal an arcade. Um, this is kind of like a not a Dave and Buster style arcade, but it's a fairly um, fairly traditional mall arcade. But like has some pretty good games in it. You can tell. Um, but you open the arcade area. Felix is going to walk out onto the floor of buttons and just say, see, I told you there was nothing to worry about. We should have just hit the button from the start. And then um, glides past them and into the arcade section. Hello, is anybody here? I'd like my prize, please. There is no answer. But you're in an arcade! Link is going to look at Jules. How is he so okay with this? I, I, I don't know. Should should we follow? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And she very, like, tentatively kind of steps in the room, worried that, like, the buttons are going to, like... I don't know if it's going to start something, but she... Once she realizes that nothing's going to happen, she follows and heads in the arcade. Yep, uh, Link's going to go in the arcade. Okay. Uh, so it is an arcade. It has a unmanned prize counter. Um, it spreads out fairly far. Um, there's ski ball. There's a little basketball things on one side couple of those prize wheel doodads from Dave and Buster's where it has like a fishing theme. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different arcade games, but there doesn't seem to be an attendance. Um, also, the roll cage leading out into the mall proper is just down, and so you're just kind of in this arcade. There is also three versions of the Gauntlet Dark Legacy arcade machine. Hashtag 90s kids. Sweet. That game is awesome. <laughs> uh, Link's going to go looking around. Great. Is there anything you are looking for in particular? Um, either uh, a another game door. or a door. Um, yeah. I'm gonna, give me an alertness roll. Yeah, hey, I'm actually good at these. I rolled all those acrobatics rolls on snags. I, mean, I, I, I love that journey for you. See, there you go. 
that 20, um, to your dismay, there are no other doors. If you wanted to leave the arcade, you'd either have to crash through the roll cage, um, or you would have to go back through the button corridor. Okay, so he's gonna, like, after, like, well, like rapidly moving around the arcade, uh, like, moving, ducking around machines, like, moving some of them, looking between gaps, he finally comes back, he's like, okay, there's no you, other doors. You tried to move a couple of the machines? Yes. Uh, please give me a might roll for trying to move a arcade machine. Yeah, they're arcade machines. Uh, you didn't really hurt yourself, but definitely, definitely they are not props. They are proper arcade machines. Excellent. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's no other doors. <sighs> which means this is probably another test of wit, which means we should probably play some of these games. Hmm. Yeah. Well, there's one game that, uh, since I have an alertness of 20, is the Gauntlet Dark Legacy, the only game that there's three of? I mean, yeah, but it's like one of those things where there's always one of them that are sticky, so maybe the arcade employees actually, like, decided they wanted one that would actually be, like, proper, properly used the whole time. Um, yeah, but there are there are three Gauntlet Dark Legacy, but that's not, like, a weird thing. That's just, like, a sanitary thing. Uh, okay. While they were doing whatever they were doing, Jules has already pulled out some coins out, out of her bag, and she is looking for like an old school, like maybe like Mortal Kombat or something, like some sort of like fighting game that she can go play. Uh, there is not a Mortal Kombat, but there is a old school police trainer game. It okay. has the little that has a little gun thing, and you. Uh, so the second that you put a coin in the uh, police trainer slot, you hear the whir of a robot that comes around the corner and says, Arcade ticket, arcade entry ticket, please. And I'm pulling up what the arcade bot looks like. should all be able to see the arcade bot. I don't know if you can see this in the camera or not, Isabeth. Where would we be seeing this arcade bot? Scroll down to the handouts. Yeah, I got it. Um, it's I have just now. unlocked it, so it should be underneath the handouts now. That's not creepy at all. Arcade bot. Oh my god. <laughs> arcade ticket. Arcade entry ticket, please. Um, is looking around. Is there? Do I see anywhere that I would get such a ticket? Uh, give me an alertness with a snag. By the way, this is a very loud robot, so both Felix oh. and Link hear this rather loud demand for arcade entry ticket. Felix is going to walk up to the arcade bot <laughs> and basically um, be like, where did you come from? Arcade entry ticket, please. Do we still have our tickets from the escape this? room? Uh, no, those went in to open your escape room door. Uh, I got a 13. You got a 13. Yeah, there's not even a place for you to get, like, coins from. There's not even a coin machine in here. Like, and you notice those because they're always that weird brown motel room sex color. Um, and, and so they kind of tend to stand out. And uh, there, are, there isn't even that here. There does not seem to be a way to transition money into coins or, or tickets. The red... Is there... Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Is there any part of the um, robot that has, like, a coin slot in it or something? You can give me an alertness roll to, to 
to look as the robot has gotten more emphatic. Arcade entry ticket, please. That's a 13. It does not have any sort of slot. It is kind of like a uh, Johnny number no. five meets something from uh, but it, the, the movie with Will Smith where he was like friends with the robot, not the one with the vampires, but the one I robot. friends with the robot. Yeah, that one. Um, so, so it's very much that it's very humanoid until you get to like the like leg portion of it. Can I check behind the counter and see if there's anything behind the counter? <laughs> Uh, yes, you can totally do that. Um, give me a... Um, give me an infiltration roll. What is Link wearing? What is Link wearing? Yeah, what is Link wearing? Uh, he'd be wearing a t-shirt that's a lot like mine, uh, and, like, black jeans, and, like, black converse. Is it just a red t-shirt, or is there something on it? It's just a red t-shirt, for the most part, but... Okay. It's like a strong red. It's a strong red. It's not a strong enough red, though, to find anything. Um, so, I... With the six, uh, you can't be sure of this, but there doesn't actually seem to be an actual prize counter. Like, it's like a prop. Like, it looks like someone painted on the back of these prizes so it would look like an illusion, and it's not actually a prize counter. Like, there's, there's no counter portion of the prize counter. Can Probably I? Probably more. Tr oh. No, go yeah, ahead. Go for it. No, go ahead. Um, I I would suggest you do whatever you you're what wanting to do or try before I do the thing that I'm going to do or try. Okay, this is probably a really bad idea, and I don't even know if it'll work. But, um, the red buttons sure. on the robot, can I press them? Yes. Uh, you can give me an infiltration <laughs> roll. Um. To see if you can press one of the buttons. Okay. Ooh, I got an 18. Yeah, I wouldn't celebrate that because oh. that 18 means that you reach to press it. But the um, the arcade bot says, "Warning: No arcade entry ticket." And you are now grappled by the arcade bot. And I need everyone to roll initiative. <laughs> God, that's awesome. <laughs> First Hooray. declarative thing you do in your life, Jules, and you get grappled by a robot. <laughs> I, I thought for sure I was going to be the one doing uh, that. That's insane that that happened. But rolling initiative. Oh, hey. Roll initiative. Yeah. Uh, please remember, if you do not have a D2 in initiative, that you do roll with a snag. That's Because you are not uh, prepared. I have a D4 in initiative, and I rolled a 7. Oh, it's not too bad, though. I've it's seen people go under much. a 10 is bad. Look, you if can't roll red, 32s all of the time, Brick. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Ooh, Link got a 20. Congratulations on that. Uh, so, Link, uh, th you will have enough movement to get to where the robot is. Um, so space is not an issue, but uh, uh, you just kind of see out of the corner of your eye as you're picking your head back up from behind the prize counter to see that uh, Jules is now grappled. Um, okay, so the, the, the robot very obviously has one button at each shoulder and then one on its head. Is it using both hands to grapple her or just one? is using one hand to grapple jewels but it is like a clawed hand it's very large okay uh link's gonna go running over uh and uh 
how big is this robot? Is it vaguely human sized or is it larger? Uh, um, Yao Ming sized. We'll go with Yao Ming sized. So like tall. Huge. <laughs> Yao Ming is not, not a, that tall. That is unfortunately not a point of reference for me. So I'm trying to picture this and getting nothing. I think Yao Ming is six six. He's who I think. Uh, Yao Ming is seven foot six inches tall. So. Slightly backwards. bigger than I intended, but I've said it, so now it's going to happen. So seven feet tall. <laughs> seven foot tall robot. He is like... Okay. <laughs> He's a literal giant. I don't right, think of him so... like a giant. I just think of him as tall. Um, That's really tall. Seven six. Has it lifted jewels up off the ground? Uh, No. It's just keeping... It's just... It's jewels you're grappled. It's just keeping you there. Next to the police trainer machine, you've still got like the gun in one hand, by the way. And I'm like, yelling, bad like, touch, like bad it. touch, just so you, everybody knows. That is what you're hearing from Jules. <laughs> All right, so so Link is going to run over and try and jump and push the button on the arm that's holding on to Jules. Like, okay. we got to press all the buttons together. There's three of us and three buttons. Give me a might roll. Okay. Nice. Uh, you will be able, uh, with that 22, to uh, press one of the buttons. Which button would you like to press? The button that's clo that's on the shoulder for the arm that's holding onto Jules. Great. You Hopefully it'll disable button. the arm. You press the button, but it does not disable the arm. However, the light on the button does go out. Is there anything uh, I can, like, pick up and throw? Oh, it's well, we're turn. an initiative, so you'd have to wait your turn anyways. Uh, Jules, uh, it is your turn, uh, so you can try to get out of this grapple, um, or you can attempt something else. Okay, so Jules is pretty short, right? She's only, like, 5'3". So is this thing, like, bending down to hold her? Or is uh, it just, like... The arm has like a weird articulated elbow thing. I was going to show you my elbow, not that you know what an elbow looks like. It has like a weird articulated elbow thing. Okay. Is there a, probably not. Is there a way that I can reach up somehow to hit a button without getting out of the grapple or would I need to get out of the grapple and like jump? Um give me an alertness roll. Nineteen. Uh, there are um, buttons on either side of where the knees would be, so technically you could do a might roll to try to kick one of the buttons near the knee. Um, would I be able to finesse kick it <laughs> instead of might? <laughs> I, I will let you try a finesse, but I this would be more a finesse as escape artist than it would be finesse like to kick the button. Taek one doing the button, yeah. Okay. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do might. I'm gonna try to kick the button. Alright. Fifteen. Fifteen. Do let me just double check something. You do hit its toughness. Uh, you met it, uh, so you actually do manage to like kick uh, one of the knee buttons, and it goes dark as well. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it for me. All right, um, and. What is everyone's um, willpower? 17. Whoa. Very excited about that. <laughs> 13. All right. Did I not go through? 
So what's going to happen is, is um, this robot has an alarm feature, and if it if it meets or exceeds your willpower, you're going to get real freaked out by the alarm. It got a nine. So it does sound out an alarm. Okay. Uh, so it does sound out an alarm, um, but there's really not anybody here that you can tell. So yes, it sounded an alarm, but who was it alarming and to what? Uh, however, it Jules is still grappled. So there is that. Um, it is... It is now your turn, Felix, to do something saucy. All right. Let's put on the sauce. Okay, um, is there anything I can, like, kind of, like, pick up to, like, throw at the, at the bot? Or is there anything that I could, like, theoretically use as, like, a makeshift weapon? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, um... All weapons that are not like your ranger weapons are technically but blunt weapons in this universe. Um, so yeah, you could like there. There's a trash can nearby that you can just pick up, um, and you can. It's it's one of those little ticket trash cans. It's not like a big trash can. Um, yeah, but you can uh, if you want to throw it. Um, you can either use targeting or. Um, target, yeah, targeting is for throwing. So it, targeting will be what you'll use when you want to throw something. Oh. Okay. Um, is there like a, a broom or a mop or anything that is like long and sticky? Uh, there is nothing long and stick-like, sadly. Okay. Um, I'm going to pick up the trash can the little trash can thing and I'm gonna throw it at the um, I'm gonna throw it at the robot and I'm gonna say um, um, at first I thought you were ugly but now this alarm is getting on my nerves I need you to please let go of my bookworm friend please and I'm gonna throw the um I'm gonna throw the trash can at I'm gonna see what I roll first actually before <laughs> I tell you what I'm throwing it at. You you are throwing it, so um let's see how the throw goes. Eleven. Uh, okay. That's gonna... an eleven. So you do throw it. Unfortunately, you throw it right on top of the head. So now the button is protected that is on top. Of oh, it. come on. For an 11? <laughs> you threw a trash can. So, like, it did, like, a swoop thing. So now it's basically wearing a oh little helmet. God. It's super cute. It's super cute, though. Um, you punished me for a success for a roll. I just want you to know that. It's not a punishment. I prop. It's it's, it's a, a It's not like you gave. You didn't give it a real helmet. It's it's very uh, fragile. So. Um. All right. So let's see. Back to the top of the round. Uh, Link. You are up first. Excellent. Okay. So I have a very important question about this robot. Does uh, yes, it would like to be a pepper too, but that's neither here nor there. Okay. What I'm going to ask you here is, can I see any exposed machinery underneath the shell? Uh, no. I, I will give you that without a roll. It is, it is a new robot. Darn. I was really hoping I could see exposed machinery, because Link still has a can of soda. Mm. You, yeah. You could, you could still try to use the can of soda. It's up to you. No, no, I'm not going to. Uh, if there was exposed machinery, then there's a good chance it'd work, but there's no telling how well sealed this thing is. So he's going to go for another button, probably the other shoulder. All right.
Are you using might on it, I'm assuming? Yes. Did it not roll? I don't see anything. Mine took a second, so maybe it'll take a second. Maybe it's such an impressive bout of might that... Oh, there's a 15. You meet, uh, you meet the toughness of the button on the arcade bot, and uh, you deactivate a button as well. Um, there are two buttons left, both shoulders and one knee is gone. Um, can, uh, can I take a free action to pick up the trash can? Uh, did you run over or did you throw something to get I'm, this button? Uh, he ran over to the robot and has been basically hitting the buttons from close range. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's not a heavy trash can, so yeah, that's a, that's a free action worthy thing. You can totally take the trash can. Um, unfortunately, the trash can was deafening the alarm a little bit, so the alarm is now stronger in your ears, but you took the trash can off, which is good. Um, yeah. yeah, Jules, you're still grappled, but things are looking up. Maybe. You hope. Who knows? I, uh, do I want to try that again? I, I think I want to try to get out of the grapple this time. All right, give me that might roll. Twelve. A twelve. The arcade bot's evasion is twelve, so you do succeed in getting out of the grapple. Okay. You are no longer grappled. Congratulations. Um, unfortunately, that does take up your turn uh the arcade bot realizing you're no longer grappled uh what am i going to have them do is actually going to attempt uh, to re-grapple you but like as its hand is coming out to do it it actually is more like a like a push or a slam than it is um an actual grapple this is going to meet your toughness Okay. My toughness is a 12. Yes. Oh, wow. Your toughness is a 12. You just, uh, yeah, it um, hits the side of the police trainer. Um, police trainer game instead of you, which is super cool. Um, and then that would mean Felix, it is your turn. Okay. Um, since the trash can thing didn't work, I think uh, there's another button on the knee, you said? Uh, there is a button on the knee, yes. Okay, um, Felix is going to go for that button. He's going to run and um, kind of do like a slide thing and hopefully hit the button on the way past the robot. I think that's very cash money of you. I would say that's a finesse roll. You think so? Okay, if you say so. Un uh, unless, you, unless you can say uh, no, another finesse roll is a better. No, finesse is a great <laughs> choice. Okay. Power slide! <laughs> because it's not quite athletics. It's more It's more finesse or acrobatics based. So I'm, yeah. I want to say finesse for that. So. I think it makes sense. He's saucy. That's a yes. 22, baby. <laughs> At a 22, you, you saucily press the button on the other knee. Uh, and there is one uh, button left. Link, you do have that soda can. You could just karate chop the top of the head. Um, how would you like to try to disarm this arcade alarm robot? Uh, I have the trash can in my hands. I'm going to hit it in the head with the trash can. All right. Please give me a might roll with the use of blunt weapon. That is a 15. Uh, as the last of the robot's buttons deactivates, you hear its alarm and its pleas and warnings for arcade tickets. Uh, it slowly likes, um, it slowly likes, uh, loses juice and it falls um, to sleep, quote unquote. 
and uh, you hear this kind of whirring sound, um, and there are some TVs over atop the prize counter, uh, and they spring to life, and there is a little red robot on them um, with just a little bit of yellow at the top of its chest that you can see. Um, and the robot says, over here, over here. I'm sorry about the attendant, but you're doing very well. If you want to get back to the office and beat the others to win the grand prize, you'll need these. And the top of the prize counter flips over um, to reveal um, a box uh, that is opened that has three um, kind of large... Uh, large rectangular watch things on it that have a little clasp. Is anyone, has anyone uh, heeded the robot, the TV robots yeah. um, entreating? Um, yeah, uh, before the robot comes on and does its message though, um, after the arcade bot has um, disengaged, Felix wants to go over to Jules and say um are you okay bookworm did he hurt you I, I, i'm fine that was just weird what kind of security bot grabs somebody like that i've never i um, yeah yeah sorry i'm fine i don't know but it obviously wasn't very well designed with obviously with huge giant buttons that are clearly its weak point um and then that's when the TVs will do the little thing and then um... well you heard the robot grand prize so let's get going and Felix is just gonna go up and grab one of the one of the wrist things uh, I'm not gonna make a roll for this they all do look the same they're all kind of the same color uh, they have like a bronze effect it really does look like a watch uh, is anyone going to try to open it at the class Jules will. Jules will try to open it, but instead of putting it on, she's just kind of, like, holding it up and looking at it and trying to figure out how it works and, like, stuff. Uh, Brick, uh, really... That's a brick. Uh, Felix brick. doesn't really, like, uh, know that it... Like, notice that it just goes on your wrist. He just heard that, like, you need it to do the next yeah. thing, so he just has it in his hand. He's not, like, looking... For, you know what I mean? He's just He just kind of takes it. Yeah. Uh, Jules, when you open it up, it looks like it's like a calculator, but there's no little, like, screen to do the calculations on. It just looks like it has the calculator buttons, so I guess math is involved in the next, next portion of this? She still doesn't put it on. She's still just kind of, like, looking at it and just, this is fascinating. This is really kind of interesting. But yeah, she never actually puts it on. She's just inspecting it. Uh, okay, uh, Link, you've heard this message from a different robot. This one is red and on a TV, uh, and there is a third rectangular watch thing on a table, and there's, uh, there's one of you, so. Yeah, it, it, because he thinks he'll drop it, he's actually going to go ahead and put it on. Okay, that's fair. Uh, as you pick it up, uh, the roll cage for the arcade is going to start whirring to life and moving up so you can exit the arcade. Um, does anybody want to give me... Uh, does anyone have Gridlore? Did anyone take Gridlore or something with uh, spiritual stuff in culture? Mm -hmm. Then never mind. Um, is there anything you want to say as you leave the arcade? And, uh, by the way, uh, I'll give this to, to, this to you for free. You're, uh, you realize you're on the third floor of the mall, which is the same floor, um, that the escape the room office is on. Uh, Jules is still just muttering about this, like, interesting thing that they, she was given but she's not really talking to either of them she's kind of forgotten that they were there now that she's engaged in something else Link just kind of like goes oh we're on the third floor sweet I wonder if they have any more donuts and he's going to start moving towards the escape the room office uh, I appreciate that um, okay so 
you're going to move that way. Uh, I think we're going to move into our 10 minute break here um, so that we can reset and catch up with Leia and hopefully um, Ace will be joining us. Um, and then we'll see if there are more weird rectangular watches just hanging out in this building and where they might be. Uh, we'll return to the Ultra Mall and more arcade bot security in 10 minutes time. Hello and welcome back everyone. Um, so after having defeated the arcade bots, uh, three of the five players in the escape room contest are now currently walking into the mall. Unfortunately for Leia, who is a little um, wet still from the vortex of Koi Piranhas, or Koi Ranas, as you're affectionately calling them in chat, um, you're moving a little slower. I don't know how you feel about having basically gone through a little tide pool of um, destructive little fish on your way out of your escape room. So maybe that's affecting your mental health a little, <laughs> a little bit today. Sounds about right. But I didn't get any moves, so. You didn't. Um, and as you are walking the back utility corridor, hoping that you will see somebody, anybody, janitor, maybe one of your um, escape the room buddies, um, are you wondering if this is part of the challenge or if there was like an oopsie or what are, what are your I mean, thoughts? I'm just at this point, the amount of times that I have been thrown into an adventure that she, you know, that, that like, the amount of times Leah has been thrown into an, an adventure and not really known what was going on, like, there's a reason why she keeps her power coin on her at all times. Like, there's, there's a reason for that. Even though she hasn't had to use it, she just always knows it's possible. So it's yeah. always, like, she has, she's made this, like, little pocket on her chucks. Like, it's behind the converse um at all times she's just there smart um right, so you are walking eventually you're going to realize that you've been walking up an incline for a little while but you're not quite sure where you are now exactly uh but you do come to a dead end uh, that has graffiti on it and it says turn back now and it's got a little skull and crossbow on it but it's the end of the hallway um and it's the end of the way forward which is weird um she's gonna look up and see if there's like something she can grab above her or maybe to the side if there's like a i don't know like a ladder or something give me an alertness roll Specialized because I have perception. That's a good idea. I am a big proponent of specialization in, the, in this game. Yeah. If you can talk well, me into it, it you should do it. it didn't matter. Uh, eight. That eight? Uh, yeah. The, the, the thing about it is, is that there must be a trick to it somehow because there's nowhere else to go. Because you've yeah. came from the place that there was to go, and there's only so many corridors, so something here must not be right. Is the is the wall in front of me actually solid, or is it not solid? Uh, give me a. Give me a streetwise. Well, that's uh, listening to gossip, so it's actually like a listening oh, specialization. Incredible success. Interesting. 21. Oh, 21's good. Uh, yeah, so it is a skull and crossbone, but you don't remember the last time you saw a skull and crossbone graffiti with a nose? Because uh, generally it's skulls don't have noses. It's, uh, it's actually, it's like a, it's like a door handle, okay. but it's <laughs> made to look like a nose. Uh okay. 
you don't have to think about it too hard if you don't want to. But if, no. if you want to turn the nose, you turn totally the, can. Yeah, she's gonna. Yeah, she's gonna turn the handle. Um, she's gonna like. Can she listen to make sure there's no like snapping sounds or rushing water or anything that might try to murder her on the other side that she can prepare for? Uh, that's going to be an alertness role because uh, listening in Streetwise is more about gossip and finding out information. Yeah. So it yeah. would just be another alertness role. But you can totally alertness roll it. I'm not going to stop you. 20. Uh, it sounds like a wilderness, which is weird. Um, as the door slides back, there's like an orange pink light that washes in and you come into this room you're you like start walking on like gym mats so you're bouncing a little bit on your feet as you enter into what objectively looks like kind of this fake canyon desert version of an rei but just the part of rei where people go rock climbing um yeah so there's like a web of tie rope lines up near the ceiling there is a kind of a uh, rock wall um, it is a wall um, and there is some kind of tall column and it looks like there's like a nest on top you can't quite see up that high but it has like the properties of a nest you're 90 percent sure uh, a roll cage down that would lead to the mall proper um there is like there's like belay equipment so if you had a partner you could potentially belay yourself up or you could try just rock climbing the old-fashioned way or I anything think... else you think you might do in this room yeah i think she'd probably try to climb um she isn't hopefully hopefully she doesn't need someone to help um she's pretty stealth pretty stealthy and, and whatnot so um, yeah, I'm going to try to climb up the wall. Uh, there are four sections that are kind of uh, color-coded. Uh, give me an alertness roll to see if you can figure out what the color code is. Okay. And I'm going to do something. 21. 21 uh the robin egg blue section is kind of like the not beginner but like the safest path up um and each session successively is like harder it has less hand holds it's more vertical and smooth um so the baby blue one is the easiest one to like make your way up to the top okay but they all go to the same place yeah they all go to like I don't know if anyone saw American Gladiators where they had to get to the top of the thing and it has like the little shelf you got to stand on there to like ring the bell. It's like it's like that. You can see that okay. in your in your head. Then, um, yeah, she's gonna yeah. she's gonna climb up. Give me that athletics skill check, please. And I have a specialization in climbing, so that's perfect. That is perfect. That actually, I had forgotten that, but that does work out for this adventure. I mean, this particular moment, I'm climbing, so... 16. You are climbing. Uh, you got a 16. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you're about halfway to the top. Give me another one. Oh, success. It's a 10. It's a 10. It's, uh, you're scrambling there at the end because it's always weird to transition from the wall itself up to the little weird shelf thing but yeah. you do get up uh you are pretty high up now but now here presents the other portion of the challenge um is there's a spider web network of rope leading towards what you can actually now see is a nest um and there's okay. some eggs in the nest they're large eggs so they're 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 visibly available eggs. Okay. Um, I didn't know how else to say that. <laughs> you can see them. I'm not. Big, they're not hidden eggs. They're not, they're out in the open for you to see. Okay. Um. So she's gonna make her way over to the eggs. Um. Okay. Um. Uh, as 
how how are you attempting to traverse this um the ropes you mean the the ropes yes um i guess just your standard like on all fours kind of um well no she wouldn't do on fours she would she would be standing upright um and i don't know like i guess i feel like there's possibly is there something above them like um like a jungle gym kind of thing or is it just the ropes uh they're they're the ropes for you to walk across balance beam style there are kind of ropes you can hold on to okay. um give me an alertness roll <laughs> i'm terribly an alert uh, I, I I cannot tell you the thing that I was going to tell you if you had rolled better than. Uh, but you're kind of distracted because you hear a screeching sound. And if you will direct yourself to the handout, Leia, what you see now as you start to traverse the ropes are canyon-themed pterodactyls. I saw that. The only way to, to put it. Okay. Um... And so, as you are traversing this, um, they are going to be trying to push you off to descend back to the gym mats below. What is your evasion? My evasion um, is a fifteen. Okay, that's pretty good. So you have you have a pretty good chance here, um, but. They are, uh, they are going to attempt to basically send you back to the floor from whence you came. Um, um, yeah, as they're, as they're doing that, I'm going to, like, do the crouching on all fours so I have, like, hands and feet on the ropes. Uh, I want you to give me a... Give me a finesse or an infiltration. For that to see how that goes for you. So I'm stealth. Yeah, that... it's a, that that'll work. Yeah, I'm, I I will accept that in this case. Okay. Ten. Ten. Okay, so you're not. Yeah, it's, it's success. So basically, you were. I was gonna see if you got an edge, uh, and basically if we were gonna be upping your evasion or if we were just. So basically, that ten ensures that it's just like. A straight of uh, evasion from you, essentially. Uh -huh. So, so the pink one sweeps at your uh, sweeps at uh, your like just just in a way, um, and you can try to get out of this using um, using acrobatics. Give me an acrobatics check to see if you manage to get out of this or stay stay up in the air no <laughs> an eight all right so that's an eight uh the reason the gym mats are on the floor is so when you fall you don't hurt yourself sure but now you have to climb back up the wall again cool so athletics climbing as as we go yes Okay, twenty. Yeah, so you get back up. You have uh, you have a little more motivation now. Um, I don't know if you've taken it personally or if you just want this to be over, but you were just motivated now that you know you can do it. I mean, she has some feelings about these pterodactyls, pterodons, yes. whatever they are. Um, they are canyon dactyls. Uh, but they, I have animal. Uh, if, <laughs> I'm they're 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 robots though. They're not real pterodactyls. You haven't gone back in time, unfortunately. They're not real pterodactyls. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, um yes, so hmm. Let's see. Give me that infiltration to see if I can give you an edge against the next targeting attack. Or I guess give them a snag. Well, I, I will do that. I will give this targeting with a snag from the blue one. Okay. 
and it has to uh, meet or beat your evasion. And my evasion's a 15. Nice. All right, a 10. So it screeches at you, which is unsettling, um, <laughs> to say the least, but you've gotten halfway across, so you can try this again if you want to do... Uh, we're going to try it again. Uh, but it's the pink one again, so now there's just chance right. here. Oh no. 24. Uh, give me, what, what was that roll that we were doing? Um, uh, give me an infiltration, to, or no, give me an acrobatics to see if you can, uh, see if you can keep your balance. Okay. Since I'm doing a balance type situation and I have martial arts would that work? Is this about balance? I I will I will allow that, yes. We'll we'll allow that. Because okay. you're on your own facing these paradactyl candy bots. Nineteen! Okay. Um so you do manage to stay on and I want you to give me one more acrobatics roll and it's actually gonna be against uh, the targeting of this last dactyl bot to see if you... So it's basically going to be your acrobatics against my targeting. Okay. Hey, that And works. I got a 7. You got an 18, so you win. Uh, you get across... The second you get across, uh, the uh, Dactobots kind of go back into the ceiling where they were hanging out at. Um, so you are clear of the Dactobots. You come to the... Uh, you come to the nest with the giant eggs in it. Um, they are not cracked open. Would you like to crack one of them open? I was to throw them on the ground. Okay, yeah. you can do that. Uh, yeah, if you want to throw, there are three eggs, uh, so you can throw them all if you want to. If you want to throw them, give me a targeting roll to throw them to see if they crack open. Actually... I feel like this couldn't, because like they won't crack if they hit the mats. Yeah. Which is bounce. So I guess cracking open, that's fine. I just want to do damage to their babies because they're rude. Okay, well give me a might roll so you can punch the you can punch the dactyl <laughs> eggs from the robot pterodactyls. Okay, that sounds really rude, but I'm gonna do it anyway. No, you, I mean you're having you're not having a great time. I mean let's let's be so real. I, I'm sorry. I think I snagged. Hold on a second. You Is also a you also gave me a brawn instead of a, a mite. So I 100% picked mite though. That's odd. Give me a second. That is very weird. I don't like that. I don't either. Give me one more second. No. Just roll twenty up to its normal tricks. Pretty, Pretty much. much. It auto snagged me. It's the Coco Pele of dice rolling systems. Okay. There, there we, we go. go. Get an 11. And gave me the wrong one. Weird. Uh, you got an 11. And yeah. so you expect, what do you expect to happen when you punch one of these eggs? I expect whatever egg matches the dactyl to um, make its mama come back and try to murder me. That's what I'm expecting to have happen. So she's going to pay attention to see if, like, I don't know if they color code if they're color coded or not, but like I have this image of them matching the mother or whatever they are. These are robots, so they're probably not mothers, but uh, they are they are mainly white, but they are speckled in the color okay. of the dactyls. Okay. Um, you punch the uh, pink one, the pink speckled egg. Um, and there's no baby robot pterodactyl, and the pterodactyls in the ceiling don't move, but there is a key with a note in it oh. um, that says, Hurry, Leia. That's not weird at all. Um, is there any info, like, so it's a key, um, but is there any... Like, I came through a door, but is there another door? Um, punch other eggs, and then we'll get right back to that. Because there is 
There is okay. there are two other eggs, two pups. Fair enough. Uh, there's no specialization. Ah, oh, stop. It auto snags me. What is that? That is it's weird. weird. I don't like it. Twenty. And uh, Yes, you punch one of the other ones, and the second one you punch, there is a weird rectangular watch in that egg. Okay. I mean, I'm going to take it, obviously. Uh, do you open it? Do you look at it? Yes, I do. Give me I a culture to... roll. Okay. Um, that is grid lore. Is this anything to do with grid lore? Yes, give me a culture roll with that specialization on the weird rectangular. 15. Great, you have a choice to make. I'm good. Uh, you feel the energy off this thing and it's very familiar, um, whether you're suspicious or you love it or not, it's up to you. Um, do you instinctively go to check your uh, power coin pouch where you've hidden your oh, checks? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, the second you reach down for it, the yellow energy in your coin transfers to your weird, ridiculous rectangular watch thing. Um, nothing happens after that, but something definitely happened, and you only know this because you are previously a Stone Canyon Ranger. I'm very excited. This is very good. Um, okay. But you said I, I don't go anywhere, right? Uh, you don't go anywhere, but, like, if you'd have guessed where this day was going, maybe you could have guessed that. Who knows? Okay. Um, so I have the key. I'm gonna put the key in my back pocket. Like, I don't sure. want to lose it, so I'll put it in my back pocket. Um, and then... I guess I'll put the watch on, like rather than just opening it and holding onto it. So I'll put the watch on my on my wrist, put the yeah. key in my pocket, and then it's very anticlimactic. It just goes on your wrist and nothing happens. That's okay. I feel like it it will come back to something amazing later. Um, and yeah. then I guess I punch, try to punch the next one. I did a pro I did a proactive punch of the egg yes. and failed. Failed. Uh, would Would you like to try punching the egg again? I would. Yes. Please punch the final egg again. Okay. I don't like, I don't know why it auto snags. That's so weird. All right. Do you have uh, any? It auto snags because you have no ranks in it. Oh, is it? A, is that how that works? If you do, if you have zeros. Okay. Well, now I know. Here. Um, yeah. Wait, no. 20. So, you, you 20, uh, I, I think for this one, let's have you kick this egg. I love um, that idea. Because I know kicking was kind of your thing, especially when you were saving Santa. Um, you crack open the egg to find a non-brand specific sports drink um, to help you with energy. And this non-brand specific <laughs> sports drink can be whatever color you like your non-brand specific sports drink to be. I like blue. I've always liked Fabulous. blue. Fabulous. It is a Berry Blast non-specific sports drink. <laughs> Um, cool. So she will take a drink, um, and then put the cap back on it, and I guess, like... There is a, there's a weird little set of vertical stairs you can try to traverse going no. down, or you can go all the way back. It's no. really up to I'll you. I'll the weird little traversable stairs. Okay, give me an, uh, athletics for the weird little traversable stairs. Not a very high difficulty, but... 13. 13. They're weird, they're little, but you make it happen. Uh, as you get down, there is a padlock on the row cage um, that was kind of hidden from your sight, and okay. the key fits in that padlock. Okay. You said it's a roll cage? It is a row cage, yes. Row, row cage. No, okay, so I heard roll, like, like I'm going to be doing something ridiculous okay oh no yeah um, you put the key in lock that the the roll cage is just a type of cage where like you can still see out into the oh, if okay. you've ever gone to the mall and you can like see through into the store those are like roll cage type things so okay gotcha gotcha yeah, yeah um she'll open it up and go in and 
probably have it locked behind her because that's her life, so. Okay. Um, it stays unlocked and open. Okay. Um, as you exit, you're actually on the fourth floor. Um, you didn't realize how far up you'd got. It's super weird. Um, you... Because you were already a Power Ranger, so you're slightly more attuned. And you did that 15 cultural, I'm going to give you this. Um, the ceiling along the fourth floor, something is like scraping along it a little bit. It, it's really hard to... It, there's just like purple lightning that you see just every now and then. Like little weird glimpses of it. And you hear the screeching of a bird. Is it the same dactyl? No, this is this is different. This is this is something that like even if you weren't a ranger, you should be like, nope, this is wrong, um, and okay. should definitely not be here. And as you kind of cross into, um, are, are you going to head trying to find either an escalator to get back to the escape the room office, or what? What do you want to do? Um. Yeah, I mean, as far as, like, she kind of just wants to get the fuck out. Because, like, that bird's scary. Um, and like we've said before, she has an issue with birds. Um, yeah. So, yeah, she's going to try to find a way. Yeah, fourth floor feels weird. Like, I, you know, yeah. she this with such a big, a big mall. This is a huge mall. Yes, it, it is a huge mall. Uh, you're really feeling it now for some reason. It's very strange. Um, unfortunately, you have to pass by the aviary, and the aviary is just a ton of, like, black raven crow-like birds, and they are, like, jostling to get out of their cage right now. Like, it's something... Something is, like, making these birds go a little anxious and stir-crazy. Um, I want to give you this opportunity to give me athletics for running. Okay. 11. Uh, that 11... Um, you're not quite as fast as them and you kind of hear as you're running you hear Ivan 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 and uh, there's an escalator if you wish to book your way down uh -huh. to floor three and yep, away and from the birds like She's not gonna slowly descend. She's gonna like run as it goes, like to not run but walk, so it goes quicker. Uh, hey, Jules. Did you start reading your book again? Oh my god. Um. It depends. Are we? We were still going down the hall, right? Um, yeah, you're walking down the hall. You hear the screeching birds, but you're not like on that floor. So like, yeah. No, she didn't. She didn't read. She was still looking at the little device thing that she picked up. Right. So you were distracted, though. Is uh, is the, the the crux of it? Yeah. Yeah, she was. Yeah. Yeah. So hey, so Leia, as you're booking it down the escalator, the escalator makes you seem like you're faster than you think <laughs> it are, and uh, as Link. Um, Felix, who's walking saucily, and um, Jules come Glide. around one quarter gliding. Um, yeah, Leia, you crash into, essentially, like, no one's taking any damage, but it's very much like, uh, if this was like a Winnie the Pooh thing, you would be Tigger, and you're just like overshooting <laughs> the escalator by, by more than you should. Um, but you've run into three other very familiar people. Hey, oh, oh uh, sorry, did I run into you? I was distracted. Nope, that, was me. that was me. I, I, was, I was running away from the birds that are, that, are, that are upstairs, and I wasn't paying attention 
I'm so very sorry. That was me. Did you say um, birds were upstairs? Why are there birds upstairs? Bird I don't know. There's an entire there's an entire aviary upstairs, and and, and they're, they're they sound angry for some reason. Um, there's there's a literal murder of crows trying to murder me. So like. I just didn't feel like it was a great place for me to be. We had a killer robot that tried to kill me. I had robot pterodactyls trying to kill me. Oh, mine and was just a robot with buttons. Really weird buttons. Trying to kill me. So, um, murder dactyls and then murder of crows. So, um, oh, I don't okay. love this journey for me at all. Yeah, no. Um, no. Did you get a really neat... We got these things and I like hold up the, the device. Did you get one of these? What is it that you have? What what is what is it she has? What do I have? Uh, they have the same rectangular watches. Oh yeah, have the same the same watch. Yeah, I got a watch. I got a watch. Did oh, I... is that what this is? I've been trying to figure out. It's so it, it's so interesting. It's like a calculator, but you can't press the buttons. And then there's this little clasp, which I guess should have clued me in that I could wear it. But this is just really really interesting. Look how it's built. Oh, you probably don't care. Sorry. No, I do. I do. Um, I really do care a lot. And um, I, I, do I recognize it as the thing? I just know that it made the... You know it worked with your power coin, but you have never seen these people. So you also are right. under the uh, original MMPR rule of sure. if you tell someone about your powers, uh, it might power. corrupt them. So, right. yeah. So we're, we we are under Zordon rules, everyone out there. This isn't Wild Forge where they, like, wore jackets with their logo on it, which I thought was absolutely <laughs> insane. It's neither here nor there. Um, anyway, yeah. so you don't know, but, but th there's some context that you have they don't have, but you need to decide yeah. what you're going to say. So... Um. Donuts? I'm yeah, no. I, I'm 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 not really particularly hungry right now. Um I just tried to get I just okay, listen, so my day's been really weird. Um Koi tried to kill me and then Dactyls tried to kill me, which by the way, who has robot dactyls in a mall and then a Should we be near died. you? Cause things are really trying to kill you and I don't think I like that. I'm only it's only when I'm alone. Like I don't know why they keep trying to oh. anyway. Anyway, I have a history with birds. I don't love it. It's bad. Um, so that watch is 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 curious and interesting. And yes, you should definitely hold on to it. Um, and be very careful with it. And don't break it. Okay. Link is going to go ahead and move on. By the way. Uh, Link, I want you to give me. What is your best? Social specialization, like my best social specialization. Yeah. Um. I have D fours with. I have two actually. Great. I have a specialization in diplomacy for persuasion in a D four, and a specialization in streetwise for gossip in a D four. Great. Uh, so you're gonna pass by um while you're thinking about donuts you're not really going to notice this right away except there is going to be a tv that goes on um in one of the rooms uh one of the darkened rooms and it, it kind of reminds you of that room on their first floor um with virtual that would have like virtual reality gaming stuff but the tv turns on apropos of nothing And it's a really bright light, so it does grab your attention. Okay, I'm gonna look at it and be like, hey! Like, wave everybody else down. Ooh, I wonder if that's the same robot we saw on our TVs earlier. Oh, right, we saw a robot on the TV. Do I recognize said robot? Uh, it is not a robot. The TV does turn on. Uh, but it seems to be playing a commercial uh, for something called The Ooze. There's like this weird wizard like selling like a kid's thing. It, it, it's like yak or maybe jelly. It's the, the, the TV weird, turned on it, on its, its own. A... Yes, the TV did turn on its own. I wonder if there's like a control room somewhere and they, ha or they, they have a remote and somebody's watching us. And then, um, uh, oh, and like she realizes that she's talking out loud and she just kind of stops. 
<laughs> Felix is obviously hell-bent on his uh, grand prize, so he is going to go straight towards the... Um, he is going to go straight towards the... Whatchamacallit, the TV that's playing in that room, um, waving his um, little device in his hands like, Hello, I have the device. I'm here for my... I'm here for my prize, please. Uh, you are shouting to a, a closed, uh, clear glass door. Uh, you cannot actually enter the room physically. You are you are shouting at a, another locked door. I think we need to go to the the escape room office. Did I notice that there was nobody else here? Like, yeah, no we have it. We haven't seen, at least I haven't seen any other people besides you. No, that's, that can't be normal, right? I don't think so. There wasn't even anybody working in the arcade when we were in there, which is very odd. Okay, I'm going to look around now that they've mentioned it. Link is getting paranoid. Are we being watched by anyone, like, in the flesh? Uh, give me a performance roll, Link. A performance roll? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's going to look really cool when this happens, but the inside of that TV playing that commercial for some kind of weird jelly slime, the TV is going to crackle apart with purple lightning. Um, but it's going to look really cool because you were just like standing on the other side of the glass. So there's like this really cool like effect um because you're just standing in the right way but also a tv just exploded and shattered um in a room after turning on by itself uh, is it so... the same energy that i saw at, on the ceiling of the fourth floor give me a culture roll is that again um yes okay. that is a grid lore That's a 12. Yeah, it's the same energy. It's uh, getting a little more aggressive now. Oh, God. Um, so, uh, okay. you remember how I mentioned that um, there were birds trying to kill me? Uh -huh. Like, the actual real birds? Yeah. Did you say no? I said, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I came down and almost murdered... Uh, the, the blue one here that I don't remember. I'm sorry, brain stop. Brain, brain I never stop. told you. I don't think I ever told you my name, so it's fine. You're wearing blue, right? You are wearing blue? Yes. Okay. So I almost murdered her coming down on an escalator. I was concerned you just didn't notice that. Um, okay, so you, the, the birds, the, bir the murder, the actual birds, not like, not the dactyl robots, but the actual birds in the aviary we're getting really riled up with that same purple energy. So I don't love this for us at well, all. Well, the, the instructions did say we were supposed to go back to the escape room office, so we should probably go. Yeah, I'm not uh, going do you, here. Do you remember exactly what the red robot said? Uh, does anyone want to give me either a performance check or if you just have really good memory? I know it said something about take these watches and it with for the grand prize. That's about all I can remember, but I will definitely make a performance check and see if Link remembers. Yeah. Jules got a twelve on performance. Because He's I don't remember. Twelve on performance. Felix you is rolling. In your book. Oh look, Link is a nineteen. Link got a nineteen. It's a great day for Link. You're 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 rolling hot today. It's great. She so never, the last time, yes. She never rolls this well in any game. It's it bodes well. I'm excited for that. Oh, I'm I'm scared by it. Every time my dice are this good, when I need, really need them to be good, they're terrible. It's fine. You'll be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. I Everything like terrible dice rolls during is, tense situations, though. Nothing ominous is happening. I don't believe you for half a second. Uh, so, yeah, Felix with that four, uh, you just remember, like, grand prize, and yeah. if anyone deserves a grand prize, it's you, right? Absolutely. Um, 
the thing that everybody else kind of recalls, and Leia, you especially recall this, because you only got two words. You got hurry, Leia. Mm -hmm. And um, everyone that got the red robot in the arcade did have um, hurry to come get your grand prize. You'll need these sorts of things, so... Okay. Hey, we um, should go. Yes. Yes, hundred percent. Um. Uh, oh, you're going. You're going. Yes. To go. You're not. Yes, going? yes. I'm gonna go. Price time. Well, yes, no. I was right? gonna. You seemed apprehensive, so Felix was gonna like use his persuasion to like have you go. But if you're going, then never mind. Yeah. He's not doing that. I'm going. I'm going. I'm. I'm. I'm concerned. Yeah. Uh, I would uh, like to point out now, if we're about to get jumped, I cannot be surprised while I'm conscious because of my perk. <laughs> No, I understand that. I, I, I like the vigilance. That's great. Uh, everyone, please give me a culture roll. Where's the street uh, Yes, you should you should use grid lore if you have that specialization. I don't know that anyone else does. Doesn't matter because it was a failure. An eight. Jill's got a oh, fourteen. That's pretty... oh. oh no. Link has a five. Got a five. Oh no! Looks <laughs> about a six. So, uh, Felix and Link don't really notice this for whatever reason. Maybe you're like looking more at the floor, or you're kind of like checking out the other shops. So you're like just looking ahead or left or right. Jules, you'll notice this. Yeah, there's purple lightning on the ceiling, kind of crawling along. Um, and you're a science person, so. This is not lightning behaving as as it normally would. Leia, there is more lightning now, which is great. Fine. I don't want to alarm Everything anybody, fine. everyone, but we should probably... That's not normal. And I point up to where the lightning is. That That's not normal at all. And I think yeah. that I think that maybe, 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 maybe we should go right now. Give me a finesse roll. Um, give me a finesse roll, Jules. I'm guessing a specialization of power weapons wouldn't help with this. No, not gonna help. Okay. 19? Yeah, 19 is good. Uh, yeah, so that lightning tries to reach out for your hand, like, uh, plasma ball style. When you kind of point to it, it tries to point back. Like, you know it's not a person, it's not, like, anthropomorphized lightning, but, like, your brain is like, yeah, that lightning tried to point at me. Like, it tried to, like, touch me. Like, it tried to, like, god of man and out of me a little bit. Uh, I immediately pull my hand back. Did, did it, did anybody else, did anybody else just see that? that it pointed, it tried to touch me. The lightning just tried to, I, did it, that's not normal. Can we, can we go, please? Please? This is. While everyone is deciding whether running. or not they should go, Felix is already, like, halfway done. <laughs> of course he is. As we're running, you just, Leia just says in her head, I want to hold your hand, but in a minor key. Like, yeah, you're going. that's appropriate. Yeah. Uh, it's actually in like a diminished minor chord, so it's yeah. like, yeah. it's like it's like it's like a Buffy, it's like a Buffy diminished chord. Uh, you're definitely walking through the fire now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> probably the most disconcerting portion of this is that as you kind of book it back to the escape the uh, room office, all of the lights that were kind of on, keeping this place lit, are slowly but surely going out and so eventually the only light besides this kind of building up purple lightning that should not be acting this way um is yeah the only light is the escape the room office at this point in time now i can't read my um, book sorry yes you're that, worried that about reading right now always aren't you um not Running! There's evil lightning! <laughs> the lightning tried to uh, punch it. Yeah. So, Link, um, do you remember how you went up to the, uh, remember how you went up to the fifth floor to look at the cool burger-flipping robot? Yeah. was up there, and there was, like, a yeah. little creepy carousel horse area, um, and kind of in shadows for, like, little kids and whatnot? Yeah. Yeah, you start to hear carousel music from the fifth floor, even though you're on the third floor. Oh, God. 
Keep running. Uh, Felix, give me a culture roll, please. I have a specialization in Centurion Ridge history. I would take that if I were you. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's a 10. That's a 10. Uh, you just barely see it out of the corner of your eye. Uh, the uh, Centurion Ridge Historical Society is like this really cool old building that is kind of like a battlement turret style outside visually. Um, you could swear... But when you look back, it's not there. You could swear you've seen advertisement for that in one of the mall directories, which is a little weird because it's never had to advertise before. But when you look back, it's not there anymore. Okay. Um. Are we at the door to the... to the you are approaching there how would you like to enter the escape the room office um i would like to felix is walking like very fast he's like almost power walking <laughs> in a yeah. sense um, uh, you you beat Leia there, by the way, uh, and Leia is is uh, Leia's like for anyone that watched the streamathon, uh, Leia like chose to have like power legs, um, <laughs> so to be able to beat Leia in, in a in a in a race is really something. You you really float down the hallway. Um, I commend you for that. So you um, do yeah, reach I'm, the door before anyone else. Um, I am going to. I, I'm just gonna like open the door and just like. Um, I'm going to hold it open and just, like, shoo everybody in, and then I'm just going to close it behind everyone. Yeah. Uh, take a story point for holding the door open like a true gentleman. He is a gentleman. Is a gentleman. A saucy gentleman. Uh, so, Link, are you still hunting up on those uh, donuts and uh, various sundry food items? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's stress eating. So yeah, give me um give me a perf uh what do, what do I want this yes give me a performance roll because this is culinary arts yeah so I got an there, eleven yeah that eleven there's one donut left uh you go down to grab the donut it kind of starts dissolving in your hand a little bit in like a shouldn't eat this sort of way. Um, which is why you don't notice, and Jules, because you're a science-minded person, you will notice um, that TV that was in kind of that corner office on the opposite side of where the escape the room doors were is now propelling itself forward, um, blocking entrance into the hallway, and it flickers to life, and the little red robot from the arcade room appears on the screen and you hear the voice again say greetings 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 uh and like there's like some fiddling with some knobs um the transmission is a little grainy but the but the little red robot goes greetings greetings am i coming through hello can you hear me hello is it my red robot or their red robot uh, you don't have a red robot. Uh, Leia, you only really... I, I don't think... You, uh, unless uh, you've decided there was a way that you met Alpha 5, you don't actually... You, yeah, I, I, I don't know if you ever met Alpha 5. I don't remember. I don't you think you've, they went to the command center with us. I think they just had the coins. That's possible. Yeah, they just had the coins, so I don't think you got to meet Alpha 5. Uh, if, if you did, you also met Santa, so that may have overshadowed your memory anyways, because you also met Santa at the North Pole. That's so. true. <laughs> Hard to say. Uh, but there is a red robot on screen going, greetings, and obviously like fiddling with something, trying to trying to focus in. So is anyone going to respond? Um, before anything, Jules is going to reach, like, absently reach in her bag and grab a granola bar and kind of, like, toss it at Link. 
seeing that he was trying to get to the donuts and it dissolved and so without even thinking she just like rummages in her bag and hands him the granola bar as the tv comes to life um felix is going to just storm straight up to the tv and he's going to wave the communicator in front of the tv i don't even know that it's a communicator sorry her the special watch. watch, the special um, rectangular watch that has no watch face on it. <laughs> right. Um, he's going to wave the item in front of the TV and basically say, um, excuse me, I was um, told that there was a prize here today, and I did very well in all of your little games, and now there are um, haunted TVs and lightning and things that are trying to murder us, and I'm not very keen on being murdered, um, so I would like you to tell me what is going on here right now, please. Uh, Link is going to be like, with like a, a, a mouth with like granola bar sticking there, yeah, yeah, tell us what's going on, this isn't cool. And then he's going to go back to eating the granola bar. What they said, but with less of all of that. What she said. All right. I'm going, I'm going to, I, I hope you can hear me. I'm going to, I, I'm going to apologize first uh, before I explain what's going on. Uh, my real name is not Alexis, but I am... Alpha Five. Uh, I am an emissary from the planet of Eltar. I found that I found that humans, when you say you're you're Alpha Five, get get weird about things. So uh, I'm I'm a robot from from a foreign planet, um, and it's really it's really nice to meet you. I'm an emissary from Eltar. Um, Zordon uh, is here too, and he is the guardian of something called the Morphin Grid. Uh, we are based in Angel Grove. You're currently in Centurion Ridge, so you're a bit farther away than we're used to, but I'm working on having a better communication grid with you. Um, and it's, Alpha kind of taps the screen a little bit and goes, I hate to, be, I, I am both blessed and honored, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you are in grave danger. And that's where we're going to end the episode with Alpha saying you're in grave danger. <clears throat> because we're having fun right. here. I'm having fun. <laughs> um, I don't know about anyone else. It's fine. Everything is fine. Don't worry about it. Hooray cliffhangers. Always what I always have to say. Uh, but when we return in two weeks time, we'll find out just what kind of danger they are in. If you have not guessed, perhaps you have guessed. Uh, but even then, you never know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, Power Rangers Centurion will return in two weeks. Uh, Alpha 5 has...